College Algebra, Module 7, Section 7.3, The Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. Objective 1, The Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. This theorem says that a polynomial function of degree n with n greater than or equal to 1 has at least one complex 0. Now remember, a complex number is a number that can be written in the form a plus bi, where i is an imaginary number. If b is equal to 0, then the number is a real number. Or a complex number can be a real number, or an imaginary number, or a number that has real and imaginary parts. This means that if we are allowed to use complex numbers, then every polynomial can be factored. We have a theorem called the number of zeros theorem. And it says a polynomial of degree n has at most n distinct zeros. This says that if the degree is n, then we are looking for at most n solutions. Let's do an example. Determine graphically the number of real zeros and the number of imaginary zeros. Because it says determine graphically, let's pull up our calculator. Let's enter our function into our calculator. So if we enter 3x to the third minus 3x to the second minus 3x minus 3 and graph it, we get a picture that looks like this. Now remember the highest power is 3, which means we are looking for at most 3 solutions. But looking at our graph, notice there's only one x-intercept. Okay, now let's go back and talk about this for a second. Because it crosses the x-axis at 2, really this could mean two different things. It could mean that 2 is a 0 of multiplicity 3, which would explain the 3 solutions that were all real numbers. But typically what they do on these homework problems is they will specify that the real numbers have to be distinct, meaning we cannot have a solution of 2, 2, and 2. So we might want to go back and say there's one real and two imaginary if all of the solutions are distinct, or we could have had three real zeros if they allow them to be the same. Okay, let's do another one. Determine graphically the number of real zeros and the number of imaginary zeros for the function f of x equals negative x to the fourth plus 4x to the second plus 4. Well, again, we plug it into our calculator as y1, and we get negative x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus 4. Press graph. And this time, our graph crosses the x-axis in two places, which means we're going to have two real solutions. Now, when we talked about multiplicities, if the graph crosses the x-axis, then that is an odd multiplicity. If it would have touched it and bounced back, then it would have been an even multiplicity because both of these x-intercepts cross through the x-axis, therefore the multiplicity has to be odd, therefore 1 or 3, so it has to be 1. So we are looking for two real solutions, and because we have to get to 4, then we're going to have two imaginary solutions. Objective 2, conjugate zeros theorem. If a polynomial function has only real coefficients, and if a plus bi is a zero of the function f, then the conjugate a minus bi is also a zero of f. So what that says is you can't just have one complex zero. They always have to come in pairs. So if 2 plus 3i is a zero of a polynomial function of degree 2, what is the other 0? Well, because it's degree 2, we know there are only two solutions. 
if 2 plus 3i is a 0, then its conjugate 2 minus 3i must be the other 0. Let's do another example. Suppose a polynomial function of degree 4 has the given zeros of 4 minus 5i and 5 plus the square root of 2. Find the other zeros. Well, again, if the function is of degree 4, that means we are looking for four solutions. So if 4 minus 5i is a solution by the previous theorem, that means 4 plus 5i is also a 0. And likewise, if 5 plus the square root of 2 is a solution, then 5 minus square root of 2 will also be a solution. Okay, and just as we said for complex numbers, if a plus bi is a 0, then the conjugate a minus bi is a 0. And this also works for radicals. If a plus c square root of b is a root, then a minus c square root of b is a root. So that's why we could pair those off. So there are the four zeros. Suppose a polynomial function of degree 5 has the given zeros of negative 2i, 0, 4, and negative 3. Find the other zeros. For this first zero, we've got 0 minus 2i, so the conjugate of that would be 0 plus 2i, so 2i is going to be a 0. Well, because it's of degree 5, We've already got 4 listed, which means that we're only missing 1, so that one is going to be 2i. Objective 3, factoring polynomials with complex zeros. For the function f of x equals 4x squared plus 25, find all zeros and write the complete factored form of the function. Well, well, it's quadratic, so we try to factor. This is not a difference of two squares, so it's not going to factor that way. There's no greatest common factor, so it's not going to factor that way. My first thought would be square root property. Well, even though 4x squared is a perfect square, let's go ahead and divide both sides by 4 which would give us x squared equals negative 25 over 4. Now the square root property, if you remember, says you can square root both sides, but you must consider the positive and negative of one side. So if you square root the x squared side, you're just going to get x. If you square root the negative 25 over 4, back before we learned how to do imaginary numbers, we would say we could not do the square root of a negative. But now the square root of the negative comes out front as an i. Now we've got the square root of 25 over 4. Well, to do the square root of that, we're going to do the square root of the numerator, which would give us 5i. Square root of the denominator is 2. So our solutions would be plus or minus 5i divided by 2. Because our degree is 2, that means we're looking for two solutions and we found them. Once we found the two solutions, 5i over 2 and negative 5i over 2, to write it in factored form, remember you just change the sign so that's x minus 5i over 2 and x plus 5i over 2. Let's do another one. For the function f of x equals 7x to the fourth plus 7x squared, find all zeros and write the complete factored form of the function. Well, okay, to find all zeros, that means we're trying to find what makes 7x to the fourth plus 7x squared equal to zero. There is a greatest common factor this time of 7x squared. So if you pull a 7x squared out of 7x to the fourth, it gives you x squared. And if you factor a 7x squared out of 7x squared, it leaves you with 1. 
well, x squared plus 1 is, will not factor further. It's not a difference of squares. But we're still going to go through and set each factor equal to 0. Well, when we do that, we get 7x squared equals 0, x squared plus 1 equals 0. Well, for the first case, if we divide both sides by 7, we get x squared is 0, which basically means x is 0. For the second one, we could go through subtract 1 from both sides, so we get x squared equals negative 1. That means x is plus or minus the square root of negative 1, so x is equal to plus or minus i. So our zeros are 0, i, and negative i. And now we're supposed to write it in factored form. Now, because x squared equals 0, this was sort of like the answer was 0 with a multiplicity of 2. So in factored form, we would need to call that x squared. For the 0 of i, that factored form would be x minus i. And for negative i, that would be x plus i. And because we always want our factored form to multiply back to give us the original problem, we need to go back here to where we have our factored form of 7x squared. So our truly factored form would be 7x squared times x minus i times x plus i. Objective 4, solving polynomial equations having complex solutions. Let's solve the polynomial equation 3x squared plus 9 equals 0. Well, for this one, we could pull out a greatest common factor of 3, which gives us x squared plus 3 equals 0. Again, we're going to set each factor equal to 0. Well, 3 equals 0, which doesn't have a solution. x squared plus 3 equals 0. If we subtract 3 from both sides, we get x squared equals negative 3, which means x is positive or negative the square root of negative 3, which means x is equal to positive or negative i times the square root of 3. Next example, solve the polynomial equation. So we want to set it equal to 0, 6x to the fourth plus 6x squared is equal to 0. Again, we could pull out a GCF of 6x squared. Well, when we pull out the 6x squared, we get x squared plus 1 equals 0. When we set each factor equal to 0, 6x squared equals 0, x squared plus 1 equals 0. So x squared is equal to 0, or x squared is equal to negative 1. So for the first side, we get x is equal to 0. For the second side, we get x is equal to positive or negative square root of negative 1. So x is equal to plus or minus i. So our solutions would be 0, i, and negative i. Now let's do one more. Solve the equation x to the fourth plus x to the third equals 20x squared. Well, we always start by setting it equal to 0. So that would give us x to the fourth plus x to the third minus 20x squared equals 0. This one has a greatest common factor of x squared. So if we pull out an x squared, we get x squared plus x minus 20 equals 0. Now trying to completely factor this, we get x squared x and x, last two have to multiply to give you a negative 20, so we're going to say plus 5 minus 4. So we get x squared equals 0, x plus 5 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0. So x would be 0, negative 5, and positive 4. Now, even though it says degree is 4, and typically we're looking for 4 solutions, in this case, this was sort of a 0 of multiplicity 2. Or sometimes we'll say that 0 is a double root. But our solutions would be 0, negative 5, and 4. You are now ready to do the homework for Module 7, Topic 7.3 in my math lab. 
Once you have scored at least a 90% on all three of these homework sets, you will be ready to take the Module 7 quiz.